It's a blessing to be able to meet together with the saints to worship God, to be encouraged and edified. And certainly the best way possible is God's design to start the week off. First day of the week, worshiping God together, glorifying His name, showing appreciation to Him for all the blessings that He provides for us. My wife is out of town, of course. Uh, I think she chose the month of March to become quite the continental traveler. First it was Colorado to visit Jonathan, and now it's down in Florida to visit uh, Libby. She had to pick March, which is a month that we were assigned to clean the building. So I'm sort of left with that for two weeks out of the month. I'm going to make her a make up for it uh, this coming weekend. Uh, she's going to be scrubbing the floors and everything. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to call your attention as we begin the lesson today to a passage of scripture back in the book of Daniel. Daniel chapter 6 and verse 10. And I forgot my remote down here. We all know that Daniel was a man of prayer. Daniel was a man of prayer, as we learned in the little song that we sang when we were children. And we refer to Daniel in chapter 6 and verse 10 as one who prayed to God three times every day. Just that one verse is all the verses I'm going to refer to in the book of Daniel, where there's a couple more later on from the same chapter. But Daniel went to his room, his quarters, wherever he was living, either in Babylon or Susa. I'm sure he probably had houses all over the place. And he went over to the window that was facing west toward Jerusalem. And he prayed to God three times every day. He prayed three times a day. That's quite an amazing thing. But you know, most of us probably pray at least three times a day, don't we? We pray when we get up in the morning, some of us do. We pray before breakfast, lunch, and dinner, thanking God for our meals. We pray before we go to bed at night. Sometimes when we're driving to work, we'll breathe a prayer to God. Maybe sometimes while we are at work, if we have a moment, we can pray to God silently. With our eyes open, still going about our chores, but thinking about God and talking to God in our prayer. That's uh, good to do all those things. To pray as often as we can throughout the day. Those short prayers sometimes we have that we offer to God throughout the day. Peter Wilson he delivered a sermon, a series of lessons on prayer many years ago. And in that uh, course of those studies, he referred to those as arrow prayers, short and to the point. And he said sometimes as a preacher, when he walked up to someone's house to uh, have a Bible study, he would offer a short prayer to God asking that he would say the right words and have the right influence on that people. Just a short prayer to the point on those occasions such as that, and we offer prayers like that throughout the day. Interestingly, this past week, or two weeks ago actually, I received a text from a, a well-known gospel preacher, several years older than me, but he said he had made a resolution, I assume went back to the first of the year, to contact five people every week and ask them, what would you like me to pray for? What would you like me to pray about? His intention for himself was to become more consistent and more intentional in his prayers. And he asked me what I would like for him to pray for on my behalf, and I told him, and I sent the text back to him. But when he mentioned that he wanted to become more intentional in his prayers, like Andy Griffith used to say, I... I began to think about that thing. And I thought, what does he mean by intentional prayers? 
And I sort of contrasted it with the way that most of us usually pray during the day. Whether we could call those intentional prayers. For example, when we get up in the morning, if we offer prayer to God, unless we take the time to uh, kneel down and spend 10 or 15 minutes, we're normally busy getting ready for work, dressing and so forth. We might utter a prayer to God in the process of getting ready for work. When we offer a prayer of thanksgiving to God before the meals that we partake of, our intention is to eat before the food gets cold. And we offer a prayer of thanksgiving to God. If we're at work, we're working, that's what our overall intention is. If we're driving to work, we're, our mind is on our driving. At bedtime, if we offer prayer to God, more often than not, if we don't get down on our knees, I'd say we probably lie down in our bed and probably fall, fall asleep, you know, offering a prayer to God. And I'm speaking from experience in reference to that. But we need to think about praying intentionally. To make sure, as Daniel did, that we are going to God and praying to Him with nothing else on our mind. Making sure, as Daniel did, that his only thought, his only intention was to pray to God. He walked away from everything else and he prayed to God. Well, I like to entertain this idea, this question. Who is he who prays three times daily? Well, we know, of course, that that was Daniel. He's an example of one, a great example of one who prayed three times every day. And the idea that he prayed three times daily reflects the scriptures which teach us that we should pray consistently. In Acts chapter 1 and verse 14, the saints there in Jerusalem got together and they were praying continuously. As Peter was in, as uh, they were contemplating the Holy Spirit being brought upon them. In Romans chapter 12 and verse 12, it points out that we are to continue steadfastly in prayer. 1 Thessalonians 5 17, as we are all familiar with, simply and profoundly says, pray without ceasing. And Daniel's a great example of one who prayed in this fashion. He was consistent in prayer. He was also intentional in his prayer. When he went to pray, that was all that was on his mind. Everything else was beside the point. He prayed intentionally. That's, I think that intentional prayer is important as we go through this study. When we think about the idea of who is he who prays to God, it is he who is close to God. The person who prays three times daily is a person who is going to be close to God. If you want to draw closer to God, praying to God consistently, and I don't know if you pray three times a day or two times a day or half a dozen times a day, but praying to God with everything else off your mind, making sure you're concentrating on your prayer, you're taking time to meditate and think, about things you don't always pray for. You know, sometimes our prayers are repetition of the same prayers we pray every time. When we sit down to eat a meal, we pray the same way, the same words, maybe in the same order. When we go to bed, we offer the same prayers. I think we were taught to do that as a kid. You know, now I lay me down to sleep, I pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. You don't really think too much about those prayers. I'm kind of glad as a kid I didn't because it was probably a scared me to death to think that I was going to die during the night. But we sort of grew up with that habit of, of repeating prayers, the same words, maybe without even thinking about them. And, but if we want to draw, draw closer to God, we need to make sure that we are praying consistently and intentionally and growing in our ability to pray. You know, sometimes when we lead prayers or have prayers led in the public worship assembly, sometimes we who lead the prayers repeat the same adages, the same cliches, the same words over and over again, and everybody could probably know exactly what we're going to pray for before we pray for it. What is that a sign of? That's probably a sign of not really praying a lot at home. 
Not spending a lot of time in private prayers. Not taking prayer seriously. At least not as seriously as we ought to. And those of us who lead public prayers ought to think about that. Are we just repeating things? Or do we pray enough at home? I know what I think, in my own opinion, what improves my public prayers is when my private prayer life is improving. And we ought to think about that when it comes to offering prayers in a public worship assembly. But we all need to strive to grow closer to God. David did that in Psalm 65 in the first five verses. He writes, Praise is awaiting you, O God, in Zion. And to you the vow shall be performed, O you who hears prayer. To you all flesh will come. Iniquities prevail against me. As for our transgressions, you will provide atonement for them. Blessed is the man you choose and cause to approach you, that he may dwell in your courts. We shall be satisfied with the goodness of your house, of your holy temple. By awesome deeds and righteousness, you will answer us, O God of our salvation. You, you who are the confidence of all the ends of the earth and of the far off seas. David referred to God as he who hears prayer. And here in verse 4, he refers to God as one, in verse 5, brethren, who will answer our prayers. And throughout the Psalms, you are impressed with the closeness that David felt toward God as he often prayed to him through these Psalms. Matthew 6 and verse 21 says, For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The previous verses talk about how our treasure should be in heaven. Oftentimes in Scripture, God in heaven, those words are used simultaneously, such as the prodigal son. He said that he prayed to God, and in the same verse it says he prayed to heaven. So if our treasure is in heaven, our treasure is with God. And that draws a picture of closeness and intimacy with God. If that where we put our treasure, our time, our energy, our efforts, the uh, things that God put at our disposal, or which we've been made stewards, if we hand those to God, then our heart will be with God. And that draws a picture of intimacy with God. Luke 11 and verse 2 says, in reference to Jesus, He said to them, when you pray, say, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. He taught His disciples to see God as their Father. What does that say? There should be very many relationships in life that are closer than that of a child and their father. So God is our Father. Hebrews 4.16 says, Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy to find help in time of need. Come to God's throne of grace, where He will offer the mercy to us and the grace that we need. That's closeness that we recognize and appreciate in the relationship that we have with God. Hebrews 7 verse 25 says, Therefore, he is also able to save to the uttermost those who come to God through him, since he always lives to make intercession for them, the work of Jesus Christ, making intercession for us as we pray to God. Coming to God through our prayers is the point of this verse. We want to make sure that we are praying to God in this way. James 4 verse 8 again says, Draw near to God, and He will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you devil-minded. If we draw near to God, and our prayers are an important part of drawing near to God, if we're willing to do that, then God will draw near to us. 1 Peter 5 and verse 6, Therefore humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that He may exalt you in due time, Casting all your cares upon him, for he cares for you. How do we cast our cares upon God, if not through our prayers? So all these verses remind us that the person who prays daily three times is a person who is close to God. And if we want to draw closer to God, we need to spend more time praying to him intentionally, as I mentioned earlier. Secondly, who is he who prays three times daily? It's that person, that man or that woman, who is sacrificial. Because the type of prayer 
that Daniel offered was sacrificial prayer. And it said that he sacrificed his time. He was a busy executive in the kingdom of Nebuchadnezzar and kings following him. He was in a position of power. There was demands on his time probably like none of us can even relate to. But whether he was in Babylon or Susa, he prayed to God three times a day. He sacrificed whatever time he had to sacrifice in order to do that. In Mark chapter 1, verse 35, in reference to Jesus, it says, Now in the morning, having risen a long while before daylight, he went out and departed to a solitary place, and there he prayed. He sacrificed sleep in the morning. In the morning, having risen a long while before daylight, he went out and prayed. Luke 6, verse 12, Now it came to pass in those days, again speaking of Jesus, he went out to the mountain to pray and continued all night in prayer. He didn't come back and sleep after that. He took off on a preaching trip with his disciples after spending all night in prayer. So Jesus sacrificed much of his time in offering prayer to God. And if the very Son of God, deity in the flesh, sacrificed like that to pray to God, how much more should we be willing to sacrifice? And how much more blessed we will be if we make that sacrifice. Acts chapter 6 and verse 4, we have the example of the, the apostles who in the city of Jerusalem among the Christians there, they appointed six men to take care of a very important matter, making sure that the Grecian widows were taken care of in the distribution of food and care. And they said, but we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. They made a sacrifice there. I'm sure they would have enjoyed taking care of the widows, but they had more important things to do. And one of those things was to spend time in prayer. So they were willing to sacrifice doing that ministry in order to spend time for prayer. That's a lesson for us as well. There's a lot of important things we have to do, but nothing more important than being into prayer and being into the Word of God. Who is he who prays three times daily? That person who is willing to sacrifice, who is sacrificial at this time. Thirdly, who is he who prays, prays three times daily? Is that person who has a good reputation. If you want to pray consistently to God, whether you mark your prayers after the pattern of Daniel three times every day or less or more, Pray without ceasing is the command that we're under. We need to make sure we follow that admonition. But if you're doing that in your prayer life, you're a person who's going to have a good reputation. In Daniel chapter 6, verse 11, the king, Nebuchadnezzar, he liked David, or Daniel, he respected Daniel, and he knew that Daniel was a man of God. It says, these, then these men assembled and found Daniel praying and making supplication before his God. These, of course, were the enemies of Daniel. They recognized he had a reputation uh, from, in front of them that he was a man of God. Of course, they were his enemies, and they used that reputation against him. But verse 16 says, So the king gave the command, and they brought Daniel and cast him into the den of lions. But the king spoke, saying to Daniel, Your God, whom you serve, continually he will deliver you. So the king knew of Daniel's reputation of a man of prayer, a man who served his God continually, who was faithful in service to God, and that was good. Whether people use our reputation as a man or woman of prayer to praise us or to criticize us is up to them. But nevertheless, it's still a good thing that we do. And if we pray to God consistently, we will be individuals who have a good reputation among good people. 1 Timothy 5 and verse 10 says, Well reported for good works. This is a reference to the lady who is a widow. And if the church is going to take a widow under their care financially, she must be well reported of for good works. Among other things, what good work is there other than prayer? It fits right in there with all the other good works. I can't imagine a Christian being described as performing good works such as this Lady here unnamed, or maybe Tabitha in Acts chapter 
9, it's not mentioned specifically that either one of them prayed, but they were uh, uh, pointed out that they did good works. And people knew about their good works. They had a good reputation. So I'm assuming that they were probably prayerful women as well. So who is he who prays three times a daily? That person who ends up with good reputation among good people. Again, who is he who prays three times daily? It is that person that would be described as faithful, as righteous, and as forgiven. Matthew 26 and verse 41 says, Watch and pray lest you fall into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Watch and pray lest you fall into temptation. If we pray to avoid temptation, to avoid falling from temptation, we'll be blessed to maintain our righteousness and our faithfulness in God's sight. Acts 8.22 the uh, sorcerer there, Simon the sorcerer, said, Repent, or Peter told him, Repent therefore of this your wickedness, and pray God if perhaps the thought of your heart might be forgiven you. He was instructed to pray that he might receive forgiveness for his thoughts about buying the power of the Holy Spirit. 2 Corinthians 13 and verse 7 says, Now I pray to God that you do no evil, not that we should appear approved, but that you should do what is honorable, though we may seem disqualified. These are Paul's instructions to the church in 2 Corinthians in light of the fact that he was being uh, condemned by the false apostles. And he was saying that I pray to God that you do no evil. He was praying in behalf of others that they remain righteous, that they remain faithful. And his prayer was a part of that. And our ability to remain faithful, remain righteous, and to avoid temptation is not going to be accomplished without our ardent prayers to God, our constant, consistent prayers. Pray without ceasing, continuing steadfastly in prayer. That's what we're called upon to do. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 6 again says, Do not be anxious for anything, but... In everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. So again, we are to pray in everything, pray consistently, pray in reference to all the situations we come in uh, contact with in our lives. So faithful, righteous, and forgiven is that person who prays consistently. Yet again, who is he who prays three times a day? Is that person who has learned to redeem his time? The person who redeems the time or makes the greatest value of the time, which is a blessing that God has given to us. Luke 6 and verse 12 says, Now it came to pass in those days that he went out to the mountain to pray and continued all night in prayer to God. Again, speaking of, of Christ, who prayed all night to God in prayer. He was praying to God. He was making sure that he had the strength and the ability to do what he was able to do, what he was commissioned by God to do, and that was to appoint apostles, as he did following this verse. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 15 and 21. So see then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And do not be drunk with wine, in which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, seeking and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things to God the Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to one another in the fear of God. Verse 16 says, redeeming the time. Part of the way that we redeem the time is spoken of in verse 20, where it says, giving thanks always. How do we give thanks to God? We do so in our prayers. So our prayers are part of what we do when we're redeeming the time, with how God expects us to use the time to be good stewards of this blessing that he's given to us. Make sure we're using our time in prayer to Almighty God. 
Hebrews chapter 5, verse 7 through 9, speaking of Jesus, says, Who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplication, with vehement cries and tears to him who was able to save him from death, and was heard because of his godly fear, though he was a son, yet he learned obedience by the things which he suffered. And having been made perfected, he became the author of eternal salvation to all who obey him. Think about the time Jesus uttered this prayer that's being referred to here in Hebrews chapter 5. Just before he was about to be crucified, a great trial he was about to endure. And he needed strength, he needed to remain faithful to that job that God had given him to do. And he spent that time praying to God. It was important that he prayed to God during this vital moment of his life. So again, he was redeeming the time. He was using his time wisely in prayer to God. As we continue on, we notice, who is he who prays three times daily? It is that person who is strong. If you're praying three times a day, you're going to be a strong Christian. You're going to be close to God. You're going to be sacrificial. You're going to have a good reputation among good people. You're going to be faithful. You're going to maintain your righteousness. You're going to ask God to forgive you when you sin. You're going to redeem your time. And you're going to be strong in the Lord. Remember the Old Testament story of Samson. Just before he committed the greatest act of his life, then Samson called to the Lord, saying, O oh Lord God, remember me, I pray, strengthen me, I pray. Just this once, O oh God, that I may with one blow take vengeance on the Philistines for my two eyes. He may not have realized that, but he was doing God's work by destroying the Philistines who were the enemies of God. And before he did that act, he asked God for strength. Romans 8 and 26 says, Likewise, the Spirit also helps our weaknesses. For we do not know what we should pray for as we are, but the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Now he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is, because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. So the Spirit here is referred to as making intercession for us with groanings we can't understand, but our prayers are hindered or, or helped rather by the Holy Spirit, just as we read earlier, where Jesus makes intercession for us as well. But we help ourselves through weaknesses. We gain strength when we spend time in prayer. Luke chapter 6 and verse 13 again, and when it was day, he called his disciples to himself, and from then he chose twelve, whom he also named apostles. He named his twelve apostles. Maybe he needed strength from God to accomplish that task, to have the wisdom to know which disciples he chose to become his apostles. And he prayed just before that. He had been praying throughout the night. And it was day he called his disciples and chose those who would be his apostles. So who is he who prays three times daily? It's that person who is strong in the Lord, who gains the strength that he needs to overcome temptation, to accomplish those tasks which we need to accomplish, to simply do God's will. We need strength. Since we need strength, we need prayer. Who is he who prays three times daily? It's that person who is blessed. If you want to be blessed by God, part of the blessings that you receive are going to be the result of your prayers. Matthew 6 and verse 6 says, But you, when you pray, go into your room, and when you have shut your door, pray to your Father who is in the secret place, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you openly. So God will reward us in his own good time and in his own way, when we pray to him and cast our cares and burdens upon him. And we want to understand that we are blessed as, he, as we pray to him and ask him to strengthen us. Who is he who prays three times daily? Again, he who has a good influence on others. 
If we spend time praying to God and do so consistently, we will have a good influence on other people. It will be who we are. That person who prays three times a day, or who prays consistently, will be close to God, sacrificial, he'll have a good reputation among good people, he'll be able to maintain his faithfulness, his righteousness, and be forgiven. He redeems the time, he is strong, he is blessed by God, and he will have a Christ-like influence upon others. Throughout the epistles, whenever prayer is mentioned, it seems like most of the time, it's in reference to Christians praying for one another, or the Apostle Paul praying for other Christians. And I'm sure that was encouraging for Paul. He asked for people's prayers, as the Apostles did, as well, besides Paul. And he prayed for others. In Acts chapter 12, and verse 12, so when he had considered this, he came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose surname was Mark, where many were gathered together praying. That's of course when speaking of Peter, when he was released from prison, he went to the house of Mary, where all the Christians were there praying. And in those prayers, they were encouraging one another, they were edifying one another, they were offering prayers to God for the release of Peter from prison, and it was an occasion of, of encouragement. Well, having a good influence on one another. In Ephesians 6, verse 17 and 18, and take the helm of the salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. This is a context in which we are given the different uh, implements of the armor of God. And prayer is one of those weapons that we have to fight against the evil one and to remain faithful to God. So we want to make sure we spend time in prayer in order that we might be watchful to, with all perseverance and the supplication for all the saints or prayers for our own strength as well as for that of the saints, as it points out here in Ephesians 6 and verse 18. So again, we consider those who are strong in their prayer life. They will be those who are successful in obeying God. James 5 verse 16 says, in reverence to Elijah, confess your trespasses to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. And then they give the example of Elijah. He prayed that it would not rain, and he prayed again. Three years later, that would rain. And his prayers were answered. And that's an example of the strength of prayer. The success that we gain when we pray to God, that we will receive that which we pray for. Confess your trespasses to one another. Pray for one another that you may be healed. So when we pray to God, we are successful as Elijah was. Successful in obedience to him, successful in living a Christian life, ultimately successful in going to heaven. And then finally, who is he who prays three times daily? It is that person who is prepared for eternity. Ephesians 6 verse 18 again says, Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. Be watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the same. To the end of our life, to the end of life on earth, to heaven, that all saints would persevere and our prayers would encourage them to do that. And if we do that, we will in fact, be preparing ourselves for eternity. So when we look back at Daniel, we think about his example of praying three times a day. That's a great example for us to follow that. To make sure that the prayers that we offer to God in our prayer life is as important to us as his life. He didn't care who saw him pray. He didn't care what consequences he paid for praying. He didn't care anything about what other people thought. He was praying to God because he knew he needed to. In glorifying God, remaining faithful, being close to God, all those ten results of being faithful and consistent in our prayers were David's, were Daniel's, and they can be ours as well.
if we would do our best to improve our prayer life. If you would pick up your hymn book at this time and turn to the number that Josh has selected the song of encouragement. There may be some among our number who need to be converted to Christ, who need to repent of their sins, confess the name of Jesus Christ, and be baptized into his body. There may be some among the number of Christians here who are weak in your prayer life. And like that text message I received a couple of weeks ago, asking for prayers and asking for things you could pray for, there may be one among our number who falls in that category of needing the prayers of others. You need to only walk down the aisle as a song of invitation is sung and let us know what you're struggling with and what you want us to go to God in prayer for in your behalf. And we'll be honored to do that. If you need to respond to the invitation, we encourage you to do so as together we stand and sing this song. 